cloning your favorite food delivery app part two let's do it hey everybody what's up i'm fergie i'm about to show you how to use some of the new features from bravo 3.0 including oauth 2 location and payments i already have the adobe xd file tagged and ready from the part one video so go back and watch that if you're looking for which bravo tags to use Let's get started. Okay, so here it is. This is our design in XD, ready and tagged to go. So you're gonna to want to go over to Bravo Studio and log into your account to your dashboard. So the first thing we need to do over here is click on API collections and create and connect our database from Xano. So I'm gonna go here and click create new collection and we're gonna use the open API import. I already have a file downloaded and ready to go. It is a .yaml file, I got this from Xano, and I'm simply going to drag and drop that into Bravo, give it a name. So we're gonna call this uh, food delivery clone, hit continue, and it is going to show you all of the requests available from that database. So it's automatically compiled the get the delete, the post, all of them. So I'm gonna select all, hit continue. It's gonna import them. And that is literally all we need to do. And we can test this by hitting the send button here and we can see that it is successfully receiving the data from the Xano database. Now you don't have to use Xano, you can use any API database tool that you prefer. And then all you need to do is import it using the open API import. So I can see that I have all my merchant data here. This is all of my restaurants that are gonna be available. So this is where I can get the list view from. Then we have our merchant record individually. We're going to be using this. If I do send, oh, let's just hit number one because I have many merchants. I need to tell it which one to show me. So one, this is going to show me Pizza Palace. It's going to tell me everything I can get here, including my menu. The important thing here is anytime there are these square brackets, the square braces, you need to make sure that you select all if you want this to be a list. If you only want to pull one single row of data, so one item, you would select which row it is you want to pull in. I can also click on my get menu record. If we put in one for Pizza Palace again. And I can see the menu items just here. So one of the menu items is a whole cheese pizza. Mm -mm. Now, because of how my data is set up, I just need to go in here and change one of the IDs here to be a merchant ID. And then on my merchant record, I need to do the same thing. So change ID to merchant ID. And that's because they're cross-referencing each other and I just need to tell it where to go and look. I'm also just gonna go and change one more thing because I want to be able to use one of the photos as a cover image so in order to do that I need to tell Bravo which photo specifically to pull for me and I'm just gonna hit zero there and then I am going to paste a name I want to call this cover image so because it's got those square braces remember that's because there is a list there is a number of images that this could potentially be so by putting zero I'm telling it just to give me the first one to use for the cover once we have selected our restaurant and gone into view the menu and that is it for data setup like I said you don't have to do those steps I just needed to do that so that my data will work correctly now let's go over to our app screens and bind the data if you want to know more about setting up basic API requests for get post and delete then watch my previous video You'll find it on the Bravo Studio channel along with many other videos. So be sure to hit the subscribe button. So you can see here we have all of our screens successfully exported from Adobe XD to Bravo. 
Now all that's left for us to do is bind the specific elements on our screens to the data that we have just imported. Let's start off with our map view and our location. So I'm going to go into my map view and I name my layers so I know that this is for the map. And then when we have the map marker, this is what we're going to need to bind. So I'm going to select the database that we just created. I'm going to query all the merchant records. So this is the same way you would do as a list, but we want this to be the marker, right? We're going to use the geolocation data. So we're going to select query all merchant records and then make sure we select data so that we pull all the records. Next up, we need to bind the longitude and latitude data. So within my database, the longitude is this field here. The latitude is this field here. And for the label, I want it to display the restaurant or the merchant's name. So I've just gone ahead and selected name from that list. So now when we load up this screen on our phones using Bravo Vision, we will see all of our little map markers with the name of the restaurants. Now let's go ahead and create our list view. The first thing I'm going to select is our restaurant card just here. We're going to query all of our merchant records. So this is where I'm going to get all of the records to create the list. And again, we're going to select data. So bring in all of the records that I have. Now within that group, we have a few more things to bind like the image. So I've just gone ahead and selected the venue image here that I know I need to change and from querying all the merchant records I now just need to select photos URL for the restaurant name I just need to map it to name and those are the only two items here that I am binding data we also have our card here that will display the different cuisine types that we could use as a filter so I've opened that up and I'm going to select my first slide and I just created a really quick air table for this one so if you want to know how to do that, go back and watch the previous video where I demonstrate it. It's really quick and easy with the Airtable API wizard here in Bravo. So I've selected my database there. I want to get the cuisine types list and I want to show all records. So for each type of cuisine, we're going to have a card. Then we need to bind the image as well as the cuisine type name. So now we'll have a lovely horizontal scroll list of all the different cuisine types. Okay, let's create our menu list view screen. I'm going to select our screen here. And what we need to do is bind our data to our menu item card here. So I can go into our menu item. I'm going to select from my records that we've just set up, query all menu records, and then select data because we want this to be a list so we need to remember that it looks like this icon here and we have those all imported square brackets. Then we just need to bind the details inside of it. So we've got the image, the name and the price. So for image, we're binding it to image URL. For price, you guessed it, it's going to price. And then the item name as well. Then what we would also need to do is add our header image here and our restaurant name. So I'm just going to open the header container and we have our venue image. So I'm going to take this from the merchant record and get the cover image that I adjusted the name of within our API collection. And then I'm also going to take the restaurant name from the merchant record too. And that is everything we need to bind on this screen. So the last screen for us to bind our data to is our checkout page. So this is when our user has selected their menu item of choice and now they're going to go through the payment process with Stripe and check out. So firstly, we have our top bar and this is just where I want to display the product name. So if you're buying the cheese pizza or the burger or the tacos, this is where that's going to be as a confirmation to our users. So I'm going to again use get menu record and item and then underneath here in my page content, I have the image, so we're going to use that same get menu record and image URL. And then here for the price, we're going to bind that to price here as well. The last important part of payments is those payment details. So you'll remember in our XD document, we had to add two hidden layers, one for the amount and one for the currency. You can see in the document here with the Bravo tag, that is how I have set my currency to be in British pounds. You could set yours to euros or whatever currency you need that to be in. And what we need to go and set 
in Bravo with the binding is our amount. So what is the cost of this item? So back here with our data binding, we are going to scroll down to that layer, stripe hidden amount, and we're going to set that to get menu record and price. So exactly the same as how we're displaying the price over here on the screen. Now, the other thing you need to make sure is take note where you have these little lightning bolts. This means that we have added a Bravo action tag to these layers. So this is our pay now button. So by selecting this, I need to tell it what to do on success and on error. So for me on success, I want it to go to our success page with our Lottie animation. And if there's an error, I want it to display this alert message. So I've gone ahead and added that for both of these here, exactly the same. Finally, we need to set up our login authentication. Uh, we're going to be doing this with OAuth. So check out the master tags list here for how to tag your layers in your document and go back to part one to see the tags that we have used. But we're going to need to set up an account over on allzero.com. Once you have an account and you have logged in, we're going to create a new application. So from the left hand menu bar, we're going to click applications, applications. You can see I've already done mine here, but I'll take you through the whole process. We're going to create a new application give it a name. So I'm going to call this demo auth and you need to select regular web applications here. Then click create. Next, we need to add a few settings. So this is really important to take note here. This is where our domain, our client ID and our secret is. We need to put that into Bravo in just a moment once we finish the setup. But for now, we need to go to the allowed callback URLs. And we need to paste in a few Bravo URLs so that this will all be connected. To find these URLs, because it is much easier to copy paste them, go to the Bravo master tags list, open up the section for authentication, and then click the link here for see document. That will bring you to this Bravo Studio help page. We're going to scroll down and click on the using social logins to authenticate users. Okay, and the URLs we need to add are just here. So I'm going to select these, copy them, and paste them in here. Now, this won't work unless we add a comma and a space in between our URLs. So I'm just hitting the back button in between, adding that comma and space. And now we need to go here and remove this and replace it with our app ID. So to find your app ID, you open your project, and you just take this string here, where it says bravostudio.app forward slash apps forward slash, and then this whole string here forward slash screens. This is what we need to paste for our app ID. So I'm just going to remove that, paste in my app ID there, scroll to the bottom of the page here and click save. And that has all successfully saved. Now we need to go over to authentication and social to add the social medias that we want to be able to use. You can see here, I've already added Apple, Facebook, and Google because those are the options I've given in my app. But let me show you how to do that. It's really simple. We're going to click the create connection button and you're going to select the social media that you want to use. So for an example, let's use Twitter. I'm gonna select it. And then all I have to do here is click continue we don't need to change anything and we're going to hit create. We'll just leave everything blank. And then for our app that we're doing, so for example, if I wanted to turn this on for the current app that we're building, I would just switch this toggle on. And if anything is pointing to this demo auth, I would switch this on as well. Now let's go back to our applications here and we're going to open up what we've created. So I'm gonna open up this one I created earlier, which is exactly the same, it's just already named and ready for me to use. Okay, so remember I said that our domain, client ID and secret is really important. We now need to go back to our Bravo project and you need to click on settings here and enable the OAuth 2.0. 
and then from the drop down here select auth zero and then this is where you're going to paste your domain client id and secret from auth zero over here once you have pasted those in and hit save this is now set up and ready to go now for the exciting part let's preview and test our app using bravo vision to make sure it is working how we planned That's it, you've cloned your favorite food delivery app. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos.